Hello fellow adventurers and collectors, Fumahawk here. Today we got a special video in that we're going to be looking at all the 1-6 scale vehicles that I have in my collection. Now, this isn't going to be a comprehensive list, so uh, in keeping things short, we're going to start things off with uh, my Jeep collection because this is the most uh, common vehicle that I come across and to be honest, this is where it all began with the 1-6 scale G.I. Joe Jeep from 1960 something I believe I, I don't know the exact date but this is where the 160 was you know created and of course they made vehicles for it and that led to the evolution of all these other action figures that we have in our own collections so it's nice to have and with all these jeeps you get to see the different manufacturers and how they develop their own toys for example the Hasbro one is probably the most functional in that it had movable gears, sounds, and uh, a movable uh, hood. So, with that said, I think you have Hasbro, 21st Century Toys, and I forget what the Medic Jeep is, but it's a different brand and it has a canvas canopy that goes above the the thing as well. So. When it comes to these vehicles, I don't necessarily go out and buy, you know, the most expensive one. I come across these at thrift stores, um, garage sales, flea markets. So I generally get them for pretty cheap because mostly the people selling them don't have the space to have them. And, you know, it's a great way to, you know, get a large collection is by talking to these people and trying to work down a price because at the end of the day, they're trying to move these things, so... I will say, if you have a largest collection as I do, you're not going to have a lot of space at the end, so uh, be prepared for that. Uh, one, one day, my goal is to have all these displayed, but right now they're all in storage, so uh, it's, it's little things like this that actually get me to bring them out, so yeah. Um, should be noted that a lot of these uh, are incomplete, as I said, I get them from various places, but there's aftermarket pieces, 3D printed pieces that you can get to repair them and that was my plan initially but just haven't gotten around to it and yeah in terms of which of these is my favorite in terms of the jeeps I do like the medic jeep because I think it's the most detailed out of the three but if I was going to recommend one I would, it would go for the Hasbro jeep the first one Now looking at their more modern uh, counterparts, these are the Humvees that I have in my collection. And these are 21st Century Toys and World Peacekeepers this is the one on the right. Now this one on the left wasn't painted tan. When I got it, it was somewhat customized. So I ended up finishing the customization. And yeah, I got that one at a garage sale, I think. No, 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 it was a flea market. But uh, with that said, Something about these that you have to weigh in terms of which one you're going to get is that the 21st century toys versions only have two doors as opposed to the world peacekeepers having four doors. So out of these three, I think my favorite is the world peacekeepers. But I will say that if you're looking for like a great uh, model version of the 1-6 scale Humvee, there's an old Hasbro ver version that I've been trying to hunt down. but. It's hard to come by, and when you do come across it, it's kind of pricey. Oh, of course, Kiko had to make his appearance, but yeah. Uh, these are fine uh, substitutes for that vehicle, you know. And I more often come across the 21st Century Toys version. I ended up having to get this World Peacekeepers through Amazon because they don't no longer make it or something like that. It's unfortunate that we no longer get World Peacekeepers in big lots because that's where I was getting all my accessories from, but, you know, say la vie, I guess. And as you can see here, I think it's the most scale accurate in terms of the three vehicles, but like I said, it's a take and give in terms of which version you're going to go for. And for example, the back canopies for these 21st century versions actually go down, whereas the World Peacekeeper version doesn't have that, it's just one molded piece, so, you know, it's all dependent on what you're trying to look for in terms of vehicles, you know, functionality. And as you can see here in the interior, it's, that's what the original color was. I think this was a white and green one, I, I forget it, I think it was a Target exclusive. I remember doing research for it, but I totally forgot about it until now, but yeah. 
Something I've noticed is this World Peacekeepers version is a little bit uh, thinner on plastic, so it's I don't really play around with it too much because I don't want to break it. But as you can see, the two 21st Century Toys versions are a little bit chunkier. They the main thing I don't like about those versions is that the the hood sits really low, so the windshield is really big, and ideally you wouldn't want that in a combat situation. Now, in terms of a vehicle I would highly recommend. It's this Hasbro Chenworth, Chenworth, or I forget what it's called, but this uh, off-road buggy that they created a while back. And I think this is the most detailed version of all of the vehicles that I have. So I highly recommend hunting this one down because one, it's generally easy to come by compared to the tan version that the that also came out, but. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, it's got great looking uh, weathering on it, and it also has some fine details that a lot of the other vehicles kind of overlooked. Pardon the guy without his head, I kind of just stuck him in there, but yeah, I ended up coming across two of these. One was at a local toy show here, and the other one I actually got in a lot with the uh, building that I had showcased earlier. I also should mention the SWAT vehicle came from that lot too, so I really got my bang for my buck there. The missiles do fire, but of course I don't really use that function, but yeah, you can fit three people into this vehicle, which is nice. And uh, something of note is that the back machine gun is from the other vehicle, but I put it on here because there is always this uh, hook on the back that I didn't know what it was for until recently. So. But the only bad thing is that with the machine gun there, the rear seat doesn't move to actually shoot out that way. So I'm not entirely sure what the function is or why that is. So as you can see here, it kind of gets stuck. So I'm not entirely sure why that is, but in actual function, uh, in the real world, that would be 360. So yeah, like I said, you get a lot of detail for the value of this vehicle. So if you can, this is one vehicle I would highly recommend hunting down if you're looking for that most detail in terms of uh, scaling. Moving on, we have this uh, Hasbro six-wheeled armored vehicle. I forget what exactly it's called, and I apologize for that, but when you have so many of these, it's hard to remember all the names. But I got this along with the Chenworth at that toy store a while back, so this was a nice find. And uh, something that bothers me about this vehicle is it feels really undersized, especially in that front portion where the people are supposed to sit to drive the vehicle. There's not enough leg room there for people to actually sit down, so I'm not entirely sure how you're supposed to use that function. So I generally just use the turret section to display figures in it. But outside of that, it's definitely a well detailed uh, vehicle. It has a lot of movable parts in that you can display it however you want. And uh, yeah, like I said, the main problem is that over here, as you can see, you can move, remove that portion to get figures in there, but it's hard to actually sit them in there because there's not enough leg room between the seat and the front of the vehicle. So I don't know how I'm going to display it, but it's something that I noticed. Not even the vintage uh, G.I. Joes that I have fit in there, unless you, you know, bend their knees in the wrong direction. And, but in the turret section, you can actually fit the figures relatively well, so that's what I generally use for display purposes. And again, these vehicles are uh, great representations of what Hasbro was capable of back in the day, because it seems like now they've basically thrown in the towel in terms of trying to give the general populace uh, value for the buck, you know. But that's a conversation for another day, I suppose. And here's a look at it from the back side. And again, I really do like the look of this vehicle, and I think there's a gray version out there, but I came across this green one, so this is the one I have in my collection. And uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what this vehicle is called, so if you have the actual name, feel free to drop it in the comments below. I would like to know. 
So, yeah. And again, I wanted to note that the wheel is attached to the top and that it makes it even difficult for figures to sit in there. So, I'm not entirely sure what that uh, or how that's supposed to work, but you know, it's uh, something to work around. Now here's a look at the my favorite Jeep with the, this vehicle. And I think these really display well and one of my goals is to actually make a little di diorama with these two, but again, you know, that's another thing to, that's on my bucket list to do, so. Yeah, here's a look at a vintage G.I. Joe in the turret. And he can actually fit lower in there, I just wasn't, I had the camera in my one hand, so it was kind of difficult to do. But yeah, I really like these guys together. Now coming up, we have this 21st Century Toys Little Bird, and it's not complete. I got this at a toy show, or toy store in Texas for really cheap because the guy didn't want to, you know, he didn't have the room for it essentially. So, you know, you just have to ask people what they're looking to get out of these things because most of the time they take up a lot of space that could be used for smaller items that could cost more. I've used this in a couple of shots, not a lot to be honest with you because it is a large uh, vehicle and it's kind of hard to display it. You know, unless you're hanging it from the ceiling, which I'm not doing, because one, I don't have the room for that, and two, it would hit me in the head, most likely. <laughs> but yeah, I think this scales pretty well in terms of it being a 1-6 scale helicopter. And yeah, there's different versions of this one as well, but I ended up with this one, which is fine because it's more general purpose. Now we have these RC vehicles that are 1-6 scale and most of you know that New Bright used to make 1-6 scale vehicles so that's what these two are and uh, if you watch that one collection pickup video that, that's where I got the Jeep and the, the Magnum so I do have to do some modifications to this Jeep because it doesn't have the foot wells for the figures to actually sit in so I needed to get in there and hack a bit of that away so they can actually sit in there. but. I do like how this scales with these uh, figures, but I think it's a little too tall, but I'm not entirely sure. It could be a lifted Jeep, but I don't know. And here it is next to the Magnum. I got the Magnum at a toy show recently, and the Jeep I got online because uh, I've never seen it before, so I of course had to pick it up. Now here is a look at their back ends, and I apologize, I this uh, Jeep was in the process of disassembling because I wanted to customize it, but I stopped because I wanted to make sure I was doing it right as opposed to just doing it because I wanted to get into the project, you know? So and here's a look at the Magnum, and the Magnum doesn't have any opening features whatsoever, and I believe it was a speaker at one point because it has some uh, ports to plug in your phone and everything. I ended up breaking this side mirror, but I repaired it. <laughs> God, I, I, I swear, I'm like a big buffoon in a, when it comes to uh, displaying my figures. I also wanted to do this little uh, comparison between the vintage G.I. Joe Jeep and this modern Jeep because just to see the evolution between the two uh, designs, you know. As collectors, we kind of forget that you know all this started way back when so uh, it's always nice to me to have a little representation of the vintage collection compared to modern figures you know just to remember where it, where it all started so yeah that's pretty much it um, here in the next ending segment we're just gonna be showing pictures that I've taken of these vehicles and some of the vehicles that I didn't have or no longer have in my collection because I've sold or just couldn't get out for this video so I thank you all for watching this and uh, this very long video, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you for taking a look at my 1-6 scale collection. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, I'll do my best to answer them. But until then, please like, comment, and or subscribe, I'd very much appreciate it. I'll see you all next time.